Welcome training campers. Today I will demonstrate here the procedure on how to operate the engine simulator from a cold ship condition going to full ahead C mode. In this exercise, I will be using the Transas General Cargo Engine Room Simulator for which at the end of the simulation scenario, you will be able to generate the vessel's electrical power requirements from the emergency generator then transfer it to two main generators operate the main steam boiler for heating requirements operate the propulsion plant auxiliary machinery related systems operate the main propulsion plant to full ahead C mode at 90 rpm and rectify all alarms during the ERS exercise Before I start this exercise, let us check the simulator's initial condition. Here we have the main engine telegraph at zero set point and at stop condition. The emergency generator is running and is to supply the vessel's temporary power requirements. The main boiler is at manual stop condition. The DG number 1 and 2 is not running and disconnected from the bus bars. The main propulsion plant and its related auxiliaries is at off or stop condition. The provision cooling and air conditioning plant is also at stop condition with alarms. So, with this initial exercise scenario, let's get started. Acknowledge first all alarms on the alarm stations. We confirm that the load on the emergency generator panel zero proceed to the yes page we open the minimal circuit breakers sea water pump fresh water pump 2 fuel oil circulating pump 2 emergency compressor fuel oil supply pump 2 boiler burner automation of the generators emergency lighting navigational lighting and bridge lighting We go back to the emergency generator. Now we have load on the panel. DG1 page, you confirm if the EP control is at manual position. Then you pre loop the generator and you start preheating. Verify the lube oil pressure, if it's okay. And then next, we need to start the other systems related to generator number one. We then now proceed to the CA page. We need to fill up the emergency air receiver and start the emergency compressor. We open the emergency receiver stop valve and run the emergency compressor. Afterwards, we need to check if the pressure is rising. It's okay. Then proceed to the FOS page. Confirm if the fuel selection of all the main engine, auxiliary engine 1 and 2 is at, at diesel oil. Then afterwards, you start two, number 2 pumps for supply and circulating pumps. Next, we proceed to the seawater page. We need to start the cooling seawater for the auxiliary engine. So, we set the temperature controller to automatic running and then start one cooling seawater pump we set to automated running. Afterwards, we proceed to the freshwater cooling system page. We need to start the jacket cooling water for the main engine and also the auxiliary engines. First, we set the temperature controller to auto running mode start 
one fresh water pump and then we set to auto running we proceed back to the diesel generator number one panel we confirm all the parameters if it's already normal so we are waiting for the starting air to rise to around 8.5 starting air and that's the time we could start the diesel generator engine so there's no more alarm and the low starting air pressure we could now start the auxiliary engine by pressing the start button once your generator number one has built up the rated rpm at around 997 and you have a steady voltage of 400 volts and at least 50 hertz that is the time that you could now connect the generator to the bus bars if you want to connect just press the circuit breaker once you have pressed the connect button automatically all the load from the emergency generator will be transferred to the main generator number one We go to the emergency switchboard page, turn all remaining switches to the on position, and to charge the ship's batteries. And we turn on the ventilation. We then check the load of the diesel generator number one we have 118 kilowatts so that's good we try to put in additional load go to the distribution page turn on the switches for the high as well as low voltage distribution breakers Take note that the ball thruster, ERF, and which circuit breaker should be off because we need two diesel generators in order for it to be utilized. If the electrical load is normal and okay, then let us stop the preheating of the generator number one and we also set the pre-lubrication to automatic setting we then now proceed to the diesel plan console at the CA page we open air receiver valves one and two from the compressors and then start both compressors switch it to automatic run for starting including control air requirements of the main engine and generators let us stop the emergency air compressor but we we'll leave the emergency receiver valve open to prevent any generator alarms from occurring On the lube oil system page, but first we need to acknowledge the alarm. We have a boiler alarm. Go back to the lube oil page. But again, we need to acknowledge again an alarm. So, the lube oil cooler number one is already open. Just start blue boil pump number one and set to auto mode including its temperature controller in auto mode do not forget the camshaft tank fine filter pump and start also the camshaft pump one 
set to auto running mode. Now let's proceed to the auxiliary machinery console to start the steam plant. Let us close first the aerating valve and turn off the feed water pump one before we fire the boiler. We start the boiler fan to pre purge gases inside the furnace and Fill up the condenser tank to at least 80% capacity by opening the tank makeup valve. Let's proceed to the BFS page. Check if the burner 1 and 2 valves are already open with fuel selector switch at diesel oil position. We then open the preheater inlet valve and steam valve to the preheater. Since the fuel pump pressure set point is already at 5 bars, just start one boiler fuel oil heat pump and switch to auto run mode. Going back to the SP page, manually fire burners 1 and 2. Monitoring the steam pressure, look at the pressure gauge. If there is any fuel temp alarm on the BFS page, just acknowledge it. It will be later cancelled out once steam is introduced to the fuel preheater. We then go back to the SP page, put the steam pressure controller to automatic and keep the set point to around 8 bars set. Monitor the pressure gauge. If the pressure steadily rises, we could now open the main steam valve including steam to the consumer valves. That is the EPO heating, EPO tank, and the condenser and separator valves. The purpose of opening the condenser valves is to condense the excess steam it will be converted back to water now back to the BFS page let's set the temperature controller to auto mode and change over the fuel supply from diesel oil going to heavy fuel oil if the temperature reaches the normal condition do not forget to open the tracing steam lines and open the EPO tank heating to at least 20%. Let's proceed to the PC page. Here we have a high temp alarm on the meat and fish room chamber in which the reaper compressor is assigned to these chambers. Fruit, vegetables, and dry provision chambers is in normal temperature, so no need to start compressor number two. We first start the seawater cooling pump. We confirm if the controls is already in compressor number one mode. We then open the liquid refrigerant lines, that is the master solenoid, condenser shut off, and filter. Then Turn on the compressor and crack open this 5 10 percent suction valve. Once you have opened the suction valve, monitor the suction pressure gauge. Once the suction pressure gauge is at steady condition, gradually open the suction valve again. And then you could already set to auto running mode. 
of the compressor. Once the pressure gauge is steady, again open the suction valve on the compressor until you reach the fully open state. Once you have reached the open state, fully open state, you could now monitor the temperature of the chambers by looking at the thermometers. Here we have the meat chamber temperature and here we have the fish room chamber temperature. Later on, this will be cancelled. On the air conditioning plant, we set the control mode to summer. Open the valve for feeding water to the compressor cooling and turn on the seawater pump. And also verify if the pressure set is around 6 bars. We then open the filter and condenser shutoff valves on the liquid refrigerant circulation lines. Since the compressor's operating mode is at manual position, open the master solenoid valve and run the compressor. When the compressor is in idle running, partially open this 5% compressor suction. We have an alarm. We just acknowledge it. We close the filling valve to the condenser tank on the board. If the suction valve has already been opened, set the compressor operating mode to auto position. Then you check the compressor lubrication system if it's in normal pressure. And then continue open the suction valve until you reach the fully open state. Use the manual switches to set the desired air temperature in the cabins by the use of the cabin air distribution switch set in the room. And then monitor the operating plant parameters maintaining its values within the standard range. Let's rectify the condenser tank high level alarm by running the feed water pump number 1 and set it to auto run mode. Here we have an exhaust gas control panel for which to produce steam, the combined boiler can use the power of the main engine's exhaust gases. The flow of exhaust gases through the boiler is controlled with a butterfly valve. So I have already opened the butterfly valve for which when we run the engine, exhaust gas will flow through the boiler. Let's proceed to the electrical plant console to start another diesel generator in preparing for ship's departure from port. Go to the DG1 page, run the pre-lubrication, and press the preheating on button and start the diesel generator number 1. Let's leave the DG number 2 running until it warms up to its rated RPM. Let's go to the LO page and operate the diesel cylinder lubrication or the lubricators. Press each of the six buttons for manual rotation of the lubricating pumps which are used specifically for lubricating cylinders. One per cylinder, it is numbered one to number six. Now we go to the ELC page, confirm if the toggle lever is at engine side position and if the turning gear is engaged then press slow turn to turn the flywheel as well as the crankshaft to lubricate the engine parts for a standard 30 minutes then disengage the turning gear change over engine side to remote control two position switches now let's check the DG number two if 
RPM reaches 997, voltmeter reading around 398 volts, phase around 50 hertz. We can now proceed to put the generator online via the synchronizing page. For connect the incoming generator to the bus bar, you need to adjust the speed of the rotation so that it will be equal with DG number 1. Reduce the speed of the incoming diesel generator number 2 via the governor control. If DG number 2 RPM and phase sequence or hertz is equal or slightly higher with DG number 1, press the connect button to put the DG number 2 on the bus bar. So, connect it. To share and synchronize the load of the incoming generator, click the sharing page. Then, press the sharing selector switch DG12 for load sharing of two diesel generators. Balance the load on both generators by looking at the ammeter reading and using the governor control to increase the load of DG1 and decreasing the other generator load until ampere readings are the same. You could use the automatic equal DG power mode so that the DGs have identical loads. In this case, I will put it back to manual control mode since we have low power load requirements at this time. Afterwards, you can set the generator pre-lubrication to auto and preheating to off position. Okay, let's proceed to prepare the main engine for operation. We close first the air receiver drain valve on the EXH page. We start the scavenging air blower and put it to auto control mode. We then go back to the CA page, open receiver number 1, start air valve, and control air valve, and we close the emergency air receiver valve. Now we proceed to the heavy oil purification and blue boy purification of the main engine sump. Before operating the separator number 1 and number 3, we need to open the separator operating water valves. Afterwards, we remove the brake button, set to off, start the separator until its RPM reaches to about 10,000 RPM. We do this same procedure with separator number 3 which is assigned as a lube oil purifier for the main engine lube oil sump. On the FOS page, you set the viscosity controller to automatic setting and verify if the main engine, fuel oil, tank supply valves, and diesel generator valves are at diesel oil consumption. Now, we run the main engine using the telegraph handle and run up up to 90 RPM at C mode. Let's manually start two steering gear pumps, turn on the main start valve and control air on buttons, confirm starting air pressure and control air pressure and ready the engine for maneuvering. Do not forget to drain all the air receivers of water to prevent hydrostatic damage when operating the main engine. On the main engine page, since the main engine is in the ECR control mode, you raise the telegraph to dead slow position. 
the engine will develop minimum RPM at dead slow position and monitor the engine's parameters. Slowly raise the telegraph handle carefully and monitor the exhaust gas parameters. We monitor also the scavenging air parameters. Scavenging temperature must be at least 45 to 50 degrees centigrade. We raise again the telegraph. Monitor the exhaust. The main engine exhaust gas temperature must not reach 500 degrees centigrade to prevent slowdown of the engine due to high exhaust gases. Raise again the telegraph handle. Monitor the exhaust. Monitor the scavenging. Raise again the telegraph handle. Monitor again the exhaust. To maintain the scavenging temperature around 45 to 50 degrees centigrade, you can adjust the temperature via the scavenge air cooler flow valve on the seawater page. Let us raise the speed of the engine. Let's adjust the telegraph handle. Monitor again the exhaust temperatures, including the scavenging air temperature. Let's visit the OFS page and start the lubricant purification of the sump tank. On the separator number 3, we open fuel inlet valve. and feed pump we turn on flow to the feed valve open at 70 percent we turn on the heating then we close the bowl and apply sealing water we do this procedure same with separator number one For separator number 2, just put it on standby and turn on the heating to cancel out the alarm. Back to the main engine. We raise again the telegraph gradually while observing the exhaust parameters. If you raise the engine speed abruptly, this can cause high exhaust gas temperature alarms. But in this case, the turbocharger increases its speed which later on stabilizes and lowers the engine exhaust gas readings by supplying additional charged air for combustion.
here we monitor again the exhaust gas temperature parameters look into the turbocharger rpm and the scavenging air temperature if the turbocharger rpm reaches 8000 to 9000 rpm the scavenging air blower should automatically stop we raise again the main engine telegraph monitor again the exhaust purifier is running normally no more alarms with the main engine speed at almost half ahead proceed to the FOS page and change over fuel selection main engine auxiliary engine 1 and 2 from diesel oil to heavy oil raise again the speed of the main engine until the turbocharger speed reaches 9000 rpm now the scavenging air blower automatically stops we then now proceed to raise the telegraph handle to 90 speed set point which is engine at full C mode now let's adjust the scavenging air temperature by the scavenging air cooler flow valve we open at around 40 to 60 percent to maintain the normal scavenge temperature monitor all system parameters especially the scavenging air temperature including the main engine speed maximum speed set point we have an alarm with the boiler we fill up again the condensate tank we close the feed water pump supply we then now proceed to the fresh water generator on the WD page open the ejector cutoff valve start the seawater pump open feed water supply as appropriate to the plant capacity estimated 20% valve opening we wait for normal vacuum once you have normal vacuum you could now open the condenser cooling supply valve which controls the cooling water flow to about 20% opening Then, you gradually open the evaporator heating water valve until the valve is at 100% open. Observe the inlet and outlet temperatures. You could adjust the set point of the distillate salinity control to auto position. Set the distillate pump control switch to auto mode. And check the plant parameters. On the CYL page, we check the panel designed for diagnostics of the working process inside the main engine cylinders to verify the comparison of fuel combustion process parameters between the diesel cylinders. If there is any deviation, adjustment of the fuel supply system can be done according to the value of injection portion to each cylinder as well as fuel supply system on the fuel injection advanced angle for each cylinder and used for tuning the fuel supply system.
We then conduct watchkeeping procedures on all main engine system pages. Looks like everything's normal. No more alarms. We go to the generator pages. We go to the auxiliary machinery pages. Do not forget to close the filling bulb on the condensate tank. Monitor again the parameters. Looks like everything's normal. And that's the end of this simulation exercise on how to operate the main engine room simulator from a cold strip condition going to pull ahead C mode.